Okay guys, nice job. You made it to the last CSS lesson, which is the cascade. All right, so the cascade is basically about how we decide which CSS rule is going to win if we have a conflict, all right? So let's say, for example, you have two rules that are targeting the same tag or the same element. How do we decide which rule is going to win and take precedence? That's basically what the cascade is all about, all right? Without the cascade and without the set of rules to determine which rule would win, you'd have a bunch of conflicting CSS rules, okay? So this would typically happen when you start getting into larger projects. Like right now, our web pages only have a few rules, but in a larger website project, you might have 40, 50, 100 rules. And by accident, one or two of those might conflict or a few of them may conflict with one another. And the cascade is basically going to de help determine which rule is going to is going to win out. All right. So our first exercise is we really like dairy. The web page contains a grocery list of food that we need. And we are going to create a first CSS rule that styles every LI tag to have a font size of 20 pixels. Okay, and then we're going to find our dairy items, milk and cheese. We're going to use what we know about classes to give it a special class of dairy and a font size of 30 pixels. So let's see how that's going to work out and which rule is going to, is going to end up winning. Okay, so when we run our code, we just basically have a basic list. Everything's the same size. Okay, we want to first give a rule that makes all of our list items have a font size of 20 pixels. So the selector is li because it's just selecting our tags, our li tags, and the property is font size. Okay. When we run that, we should see that our font um, size gets a little larger for our list items. Okay. We're going to grab our dairy items and we're going to put them in a special class. Remember, classes are great when you have multiple tags that you want to put in them, and this is one good example of that. So milk is a dairy and cheese is dairy so they're going to go in the dairy class okay we are going to give our dairy class oops what did i forget hopefully you were able to spot that the period okay and it's going to be 30 pixels okay now there's a conflict here right because we set up here that all of our list items should be 20 pixels and milk and cheese are list items because they're in the li tag all right but then we created another rule the dairy class and we said in this class the font size is 30 pixels right so which one is going to win out right if we run our code we can see that the dairy class is going to win and it's going to beat the li rule for these two items because classes are considered to be more specific than tag selectors. Okay, so one of the rules of the cascade is that if there is a rule that conflicts and one rule is a tag selector and the other rule is a class selector, the class selector is going to win because it takes precedence over the tag selector and the class is more specific than the tag. So we're going to go with whatever the tag, I'm um, sorry, the class selector rule says. Okay, now when I first started coding, this took me a little while to remember. Okay, don't try memorizing this. It'll just be something that uh, gets ingrained with practice, but just understand the reasoning. Classes are more specific than tags, so that will take precedence in the cascade. Okay, very nice job on this. We have one more exercise for the CSS unit. We are almost there, everyone.